the Utah Jazz for one Milk Dud. Not a whole box, just one Milk Dud and a bag of Fritos. Uh, Jazz picked up a solid player. I actually like John Collins a lot. I just think he needed a change of scenery. I think with the Utah Jazz, he'll get a fresh start, fresh opportunity. Uh, I think he'll be the starting uh, power forward. They have him, Laurie Markinen, uh, Walker Kessler. Now, I've seen some people, uh, quite a bit of people, talk about John Collins and why didn't the Lakers go and try to acquire John Collins. I just, why? We don't really need him, right? Because he can't really play the three. He's best at the four spot. You got Rui Hachimura, LeBron James. You even have guys like Jared Vanderbilt, Anthony Davis, if you go get a center, or even if you just move Davis to the four, right? So John Collins, a fresh opportunity and a place for him to kind of get back to the guy that he was early on. The Lakers just probably aren't that destination. At the price that we got John Collins, I wouldn't have hated it. Um, But uh, again, he's just undervalued, undersized. Another thing too that I want to talk about is this is what I keep mentioning and people keep talking oh it's delusional blah 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 people don't understand the new cba people don't understand the people that are saying like oh you're not going to get this guy for a bag of peanuts you're not going to get this guy those are the people that just don't understand how the nba works because you're seeing it over and over and over again by teams are selling pieces that are very good pieces maybe they're slightly overvalued but they're still very good pieces that could impact a lot of rosters they are just saying here just take him they're not asking for anything really in return because they don't want to have to get stuck paying them and other teams are very limited in trying to trade those resources to get that it's a completely different league john collins Six months ago, might have not have went for a bag of peanuts. He might have actually went for a nice package. Not anymore, right? So this whole idea that people have of like, I don't understand why this guy's going here for this or that. It's the new CBA. The new CBA is going to change a lot of just the landscape of the NBA because teams are going to let guys like a John Collins go. Uh, it's something, and it's a reason why I've mentioned Ruby Hachimura and Austin Reeves. Don't get too attached because if the Lakers have to overpay for him, if this was before the new CBA, right, the Lakers would have overpaid. Who cares? At this point now, I don't know. It's going to be scary. But sticking with John Collins and the reason I'm even mentioning John Collins, I just wanted to talk about the CBA for a moment to get people to understand because this is a trade that is directly affected by the new CBA. Now the Utah Jazz have a plethora of big men right? Uh, Lori Markinen is playing the three spot for them <laughs> and he's like seven foot. So they're probably going to go Walker Kessler at the center position, Markinen at the three, and then Collins at the four. What that means is that Kelly Olynyk is very likely going to be the odd man out. Now there's no real incentive. They don't have to trade Kelly Olynyk by any means. They could gladly just keep him and have him be a big off the bench, which very likely could be the case. But I think if the Lakers can, they should go and acquire Kelly Olenek. At least reach out and just test the waters, right? See what the, the potential is on a on a Kelly Olenek, right? The center position is very, very sparse and very, very limited. All of like the good, really good centers that would help the Lakers a lot are all going to be out of our price range. And then you're kind of just boiled down to maybe at best Mason Plumley, But if you could go work out a trade to maybe go upgrade that position or go do something like that, obviously in a perfect world, you go get like a Miles Turner or something like that, but who knows if that's even still on the table. So could you go get a guy like Kelly Olynyk, who would be a huge impact? And he does a lot of the same stuff that we want from some of these centers that are high profile that we want to bring the Lakers. He's also only on a $12 million contract that's partially guaranteed and only has one more year left on his deal. So you could swap Mo Bamba for Kelly Olynyk, And I wouldn't mind that at all, right? He's a guy that could play the four. He could play the five at times, right? I think he's a guy that could absolutely make an impact on the Lakers. I think he, he has real good size, right? He's not like some 6'9 tweener. No, he's 6'11", 240. So he is the size of most of the centers in the league, and he can do a little bit of everything. The guy is very skilled, very gifted, uh, very talented, shot uh, just under 40% from three. So you got a big that can stretch the floor. He shoots 50% from the field goal range. Uh, he's a great passer 
at his position. So you could even run your offense through him at times. He had just under four assists. This was a 12 and six guy, 12, six and four guy with a steal and a, and a block per game in 28 minutes of play. This is, this is exactly what we need. You could start him right alongside Anthony Davis and have them be that one, two punch. You could even, if you don't want to go with him at the starting center, he would be a great backup, right? Like, even if you do go and land somebody else, right? Let's say you are, let's say you are able to trade for whomever, I don't know, or you sign somebody. Let's say Brooke Lopez is like, I do want to come to the Lakers, and I will take a taxpayer mid-level. Great, right? It wouldn't hurt to go and still go get Kelly Olynyk to be your big man that can replace not only Anthony Davis at times, but can replace uh, Brooke Lopez, I actually really like the idea. He provides everything that you could want. He's not a great defender, but he's tough. He's physical. He's high energy. He gets at it. He loves to play the Lakers too, right? He loves to just just ball out on the Lakers. Every time the Lakers play a team that Kelly Olynyk's on, Kelly Olynyk just balls out. So maybe if he's on the Lakers, he can do that for 82 games. That would be extra nice, right? Instead of just having to get smacked up on uh but then there is always the fear like uh uh what uh what is it uh michael beasley he always torched the lakers and just killed the lakers game in and game out but then when he became a laker he was basically useless hopefully that's not the case we call you um he's also a guy he just he played 68 games this past season um he's played about 70 games every year for his career so he's a guy that can stay on the court that can stay on the floor um, there is a little concern, right, about LeBron James. Is this would LeBron James want Kelly Olynyk after what Kelly Olynyk did to Kevin Love, right? Like, does LeBron kind of feel a type of way about that? Maybe, but I do think Kelly Olynyk is a guy that could absolutely come in, kind of round out that center spot. Again, there's not really better options out there that are reasonably obtainable, right? Like, I would love to go and get Brooke Lopez, but. How realistic is that? I'd love to get Nikola Vucevic, right? But how realistic is that, right? And Kelly, like Kelly Olynyk, over like Christian Wood or Plumlee. I mean, you could even go get Plumlee still, right? Because you would trade for Olynyk. So, right, like let's say Plumlee does want to come to the Lakers, you could easily go and just say, okay, cool, let's bring in Kelly Olynyk and have Kelly Olynyk start, and then him and Anthony Davis could be your starting front court and then you have Mason Plumlee to come off the bench would it hurt it's just more big bodies to throw at the inevitable matchup against Jokic right imagine having Kelly Olenek who can bane with Jokic and just you know just wear him down and then you throw Mason Plumlee who could do the same thing and you could throw Anthony Davis and all that stuff like it just I think it would help a lot Right, you go. You can't have too many six eleven guys that can do multiple things, especially a guy like Kelly Olynyk who can pass the ball. Again, great passer. He's a guy that you could dump the ball down to in the post and just let him make plays, and he's really good at it. So you could have him make plays. He's good at just he can make shots back to the basket. You could dump the ball down to him at times and just let him go to work. He's a guy that could take players off the dribble. Right, we've seen him just get the ball at the top of the key and just march to the basket we've even seen him get rebounds off the break and run down and get a layup on the other end and cross some dude up right so he's a guy that is very versatile I think would fit into the Lakers schemes beautifully um him and Anthony Davis I think would make for a nice pairing and you could have Anthony Davis in like that spy help position where he could come over and and blindside help for Kelly Olenek and get some extra blocks Kelly Olenek is a guy that can hold his own um, he's a guy that can come in and, and provide some level of just deterrency and shot blocking. I, I do. I, I would at least inquire, right? Worst case scenario, they say, yeah, no, we want to keep Kelly Olenek. All right. And now you're back to the drawing board. Does it hurt to at least say, Hey, you know, what do, what can we acquire? Like, what would it take? I don't think it would cost much to get Kelly Olenek. Like if you could trade Mo Bamba and, a second round pick or something like that. Perfect. Also, Kelly Olynyk is made is a slight bump over Mo Bamba, right? And it fits under the 125% rule. So it also would give you a slightly larger contract to trade at like the deadline if you wanted to, right? Like if like let's say you find a deal at the trade deadline or something and you could move off Olynyk if you wanted to. Um, I think that that gives you flexibility. He's also a veteran that 
has been in the league. He's a guy that understands how the ins and outs go, a guy that you could trust in key moments, a guy that's hit big shots. I mean, he had two big shots against the Lakers, right? I mean, literally, just clutch threes and just ridiculous shots. The, so the guy is a guy that you could that can spread the floor, which is what you need, gives you another 40% three-point shooter. Um, again, defensively is his biggest sort of flop, but he's not terrible. He was league average. He was 115.4, which is league, league average is 115. So he's literally right around league average defensively, but he's a 40% three-point shooter and does everything else really well. I, I don't, if you can sign him up, I think you do. I think if you could go and find a way to trade him, in a perfect world, they'll just waive him <laughs> but because he's on a partially guaranteed, but Utah also needs to like get to a cap floor and stuff like that. They have cap space and all kinds of stuff. Um, although John Collins, they absorbed a lot of that into the cap space. But still, I... Um, I do. I like the idea of Kelly Olenek. I think it's something at least, if I'm Rob, I'm at least picking up the phone, engaging, like, hey, you know, what are, what are, what are your what are your thoughts on Kelly Olenek, right? What do you value him at? But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass the question to you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Do you feel the same way? Do you agree? Yes. Go and inquire about Kelly Olenek. If you can get him, great. Do you think no? Again, you could get Kelly Olenek and still go get another center, right? Like, Kelly Olenek has been a backup for a good portion of his career and it has no problems in that role. So you could easily go like, let's say again, Brooke Lopez, let's say he does want to come, right? You could still sign Brooke Lopez for the same amount. It literally won't affect your money regardless. So you could easily go trade for Kelly Olenek. And then if a Brooke Lopez or a Yaka Pirtle or whatever want to come, boom, perfect. Do that, get that. And then now you have your three big men, Brennan, Colin Castleton, there you go. Now you got now you got your your big man and you got your one development guy that can get some minutes here and there when AD misses a game or whatever. Perfect, right? That would that's kind of um, I would I wouldn't hate it. But do you feel the same way? Let me know down in the comments.